Good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Joseph Horvath, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Novaspace. I thank you all for joining me today, uh, and I'm very excited to have this opportunity to, to speak with this audience and, and talk about a subject I'm, I'm very passionate about. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking our hosts um, and the World Space Summit for putting on this event. Uh, I'm very excited to be here and I'm very excited to be talking with everyone uh, both today and tomorrow about how we can support each other and, and how we can expand uh, all the wonderful things that are happening within, within space and the space industry right now. For today, um, the goal of what I, I want to talk to everyone about is the, the current state of the space education training and, and professional development that we see today. Um, I'm going to introduce a new model for how I believe we can do that better as we move forward, and then why it's important that we do that in order to mature the space economy and the space ecosystem. For those of you I haven't met before, um, I come from a, a background of space. I, I grew up, as many of you probably did, uh, extremely interested in the sciences and, and space in general, and, and that's where I found myself academically throughout the years. Um, but I have had kind of an interesting career. I started um, as a Marine Corps officer as an assault support helicopter pilot and then transitioned um, later in my career getting back to space that I had done in my early college days. Uh, and I was a space operations officer for the Marine Corps for uh, right about uh, 10 years. Um, I had experiences at the Pentagon and with strategic command as it, as it moved into space command, um, having been involved in things like plans, policy, and operations, and also leading the Marine Corps space cadre with respect to our professional development, training, um, and education. As I was leaving the military service and, and looking for uh, what I wanted to move into, uh, I decided that there had been a trend I had seen throughout the years related to um, how we train folks and how we educate folks within the space industry. Um, Having worked in such a variety of different places over the years, there were some common trends that I kept seeing, um, and I felt that we could do better. And I felt that the focus on that was important for how we grow the space industry, and I'm going to get into that next. So, like I said, what is the key to supporting the growth that we're seeing, supporting all this investment, supporting all the technology development? I throw that out as a question to ponder uh, as we move forward through this talk. Many uh, focus these days on, on technology, on innovation and research, and, and on investment, which are all very important aspects of how we grow, how we mature, and how we build out this space, space ecosystem to make it everything possible. Um, when I go to various conferences or, or talks or things like that, it seems like the majority of the focus is on that technology, that capability development, and that investment, um, the business side of growing the industry, which are all extremely important. And I'm always very excited to see all the new and exciting things that we're doing um, and the goals that the industry and uh, the space um, economy are trying to accomplish. But there's a piece missing here. And in my opinion, it's probably the most important piece. And that is the people. In order to accomplish all the things that we saw on the last slide, we need the people to bring it all together. And without that, we can't accomplish any of those previous goals or, or previous uh, areas that we want to expand and grow this industry into a much more uh, mature and robust um, domain. And so my focus of this talk today essentially becomes how we support the people, how we grow the people, and how we enable them through better careers and better professional development to support all the wonderful things that we're trying to do. So as we look at space training and professional development as it's done today, uh, there's a few things that I think really stand out. Um, the first being that it tends to be heavily focused on, on college degrees, uh, and that's how we get education. Uh, there really isn't all that much training per se and professional development is is specifically lacking 
Now, college degrees are extremely important. Uh, for anyone working in very niche specialties um, or very advanced technical areas, things like that, we obviously need the traditional college career path uh, to support uh, those level of specialization and those levels of expertise. But it's not the only way for people to enter the industry, and I think we need to broaden beyond just that when we talk about the skills gap that exists and how we bring in people of all different types, whether it's technicians or support staff, um, you know, HR recruiting, uh, financial analysts, all kinds of things that are needed to come in and support the industry that aren't necessarily your traditional college degree paths that, uh, to bring these people in. Another thing I, I frequently see is that because of the way we do education and professional development currently, we end up with people focusing on very niche specialties um, and very niche career paths that limit uh, both the ability of that person to expand themselves and broaden. And it also hurts our ability to communicate and our ability to uh, operate more cross-functionally you know, with our teams, our partners, and our stakeholders because we get very focused in, in very specific areas and, and don't necessarily know what's happening um, or what some of the, the challenges um, and trade spaces that exist with regards to the people that are around us and, and we're working with that are outside of what we normally do. Along with that, as I kind of mentioned, there are very limited professional development opportunities within the space industry. And I think that that's a very important thing that needs to change as we go forward. And I'm going to present a few models for how we can do that better. And then finally, there really is a lack of, of standardization within the space industry you know as we as we develop a more refined uh industry and we de develop a more refined job path career path and professional development it really helps standardize the knowledge base and standardize how we communicate um, and i think that that's really important for businesses and organizations as they look to onboard new people um, and as we look for people entering the workforce to be able to show that they have certain levels of experience or knowledge, that standardization is something that um, a mature industry has that, that we need to look harder at uh, and how to accomplish that. The next step is to think through how do we mature the industry? How do we get to a more mature place um, than we are now? And I want to go and, and look at an example of the computer and cyber industry and how that developed over the past 30 years or so, because I think it's an interesting analog to look at for what we could be doing better within the space industry. So starting off in the, in the 80s and the early 90s, the space industry, or I'm sorry, the, the cyber industry was very much uh, the Wild West, if you will. Um, there were minimal standards all kinds of new technologies being created. A lot of companies had unique proprietary protocols or devices that weren't very interoperable. And really, there was kind of an immature standardization of knowledge across the industry at that point, as that you know real explosive growth happened uh, in the early days. As you move later into the 90s and into the early 2000s, you start seeing standardizations uh, occurring. You start seeing um, standardizations of, of device protocols, of internet protocols, um, of interoperable device systems, things like USB, Firewire, um, various internet and routing protocols. Things become a lot more standardized and shared and open so that uh, interoperability occurs uh, between businesses and between manufacturers, um, in my opinion, allowing for more growth and more creativity in, in what's being designed. And then finally, you also start to see certifications becoming much more prevalent, um, either coming from uh, organizations that are specifically focused on that or from major industry players, uh, such as your Microsoft or your Cisco or different ones that are putting out certifications that begin really kind of standardizing that fundamental body of knowledge, if you will. Finally, as we get into the last decade, we see this really, really start to come together. You've got very established professional standards. You've got very common protocols that are being used across the board. 
mature certification types. And really, it, it really drives towards a very mature professional development pipeline within that community, um, allowing for people to enter it at very pla various places in their careers, uh, to start from their career all the way through it, or to enter it later in life um, laterally from, from some other area that they might have been focused in. From my position watching this, I really think the space industry is in that first block. Um, and getting towards that last block is really what will drive us forward uh, to refine how we do business, um, to define how we can be more creative, uh, and to define how we can better support the users and stakeholders that we are developing things for. So in order to look really at how things are being done today and how we can do it better, I'm gonna use an analog to these two monuments that you see on your screen. And you know, I find it interesting for this talk because around 5,000 years ago or so, scientists and engineers of that time period, if you will, um, were building these two structures, Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid at Giza. And they were using, um, they were using very similar ideas about what they were trying to accomplish, which was essentially to monitor and study the stars and nature and, and uh, what they were seeing in the natural world. But they went about it in very, very different ways. On the left, um, you've got a design that is um, largely pillars, largely stovepiped, if you will. Um, it's very disjointed and there's gaps between everything that you're seeing. And on the right with the pyramid model, you're seeing something that is based much more on a very solid foundation with everything supporting, everything in uh, mutual support of each other and connected. And in my opinion, that is what provided the strength for what you see today of these, where the one on the right um, is obviously still standing strong and the one on the left um, has fallen um, into disarray, if you will, over time. Um, and really can't serve its function the same way it was designed originally. So with that, I'm going to take the Stonehenge model first and discuss why I believe that is how we are doing training and education uh, within the professional development for our industry currently. So if you think of it this way, kind of like Stonehenge, Careers within the space industry are, are largely stovepiped into niche specialties currently. Um, people are focused on things like launch or payload design or operations as some examples um, that I've got there as pillars. And there's a whole bunch more of these, but these are just a few examples. So normally somebody kind of comes out of school or they get their training and education and they go into one of these pipelines or one of these pillars and that's what they do for you know the first part of their career and then they eventually um, they might rise to the point of being a manager of these types of groups whether a project or program or some type of thing like that and then if they continue on they might become a senior leader at some point as well the problem with this kind of model is that it doesn't allow um, for much cross training it doesn't allow for experiences across those various pillars uh, that help you become a better manager a better senior leader, and it doesn't have a very solid foundation across the board for everyone involved. Um, so as I said, we're talking about those stovepipes, that lack of that fundamental knowledge and standardization at the entry point. And really, in my opinion, this leads to limited career paths um, for somebody as opposed to something that includes a lot more interaction and cross-training across the board. So the Stonehenge model, in my opinion, is in many ways analogous to how we do training and education and career paths within the space industry today. So from that, I'm going to move to the Great Pyramid model. And to me, this is a much better way to go about professional development and a much better way for us to move forward as we develop future models. So with this Great Pyramid model, everyone starts out as a generalist uh, in whatever type of foundational training and education they get. 
uh, and this can include certifications as well, so that that way, as somebody's entering their career, um, there is a standardized expectation among employers, among partners, among users and stakeholders of what this person knows across the board. You're still going to need specialists. You're still going to need people with college degrees, advanced college degrees, doing the real hard work involved in some of the real technical aspects. But it does mean that that person from the beginning is going to understand um, what their other team members are focused on, what some of those trade spaces are that the people that they're working around are, are worried about, which allows more collaboration, uh, more creativity, and really better communication across the teams as they're working. Now, as they progress through their career, they'll get more specialized types of courses, more specialized work experience, that they will move up through that pillar, if you will. But with that solid foundation, it allows them to become a much broader specialist as they develop those future skills. And then they can potentially move laterally within that center area as a specialist working in different areas um, based on that background that they had. So as you create those managers and more senior leaders going up through this pyramid, they've got a, a much more uh, cohesive and less disjointed view about what's going on within their organization or what's going on uh, with regards to the things that they're trying to design and execute for their users. And then finally, as you get to the top of the pyramid, you get to your true senior leaders. And at that point, they're becoming a generalist again with all those experiences that they've had over time. And it's important to have some kind of capstone training and certification as people move up in those careers and they become middle and more senior level leaders to help develop those more advanced um, ideas, thought processes, and graduate level thought um, about how to do things better, to learn lessons from the past and, and from others. Um, just like in any kind of professional development. So in this model, we're really focused on a real solid foundation across the board. It leads to improved communication, more experiences interdisciplinary across those pillars that the last model had. And in my opinion, it allows for more broadened career paths as you move through these different areas um, you're not expected to just necessarily stay in the one area that you started out in, but you've had broader experiences that allow you to gain uh, the advantage um, of, of experiences in different areas, in different capabilities, and in different mission areas throughout your organization. So with that, I believe developing a much more um, cohesive, a much more strengthened foundation to our current state of space education, training, and professional development is the key to accelerating and sustaining our industry growth. First, I believe that as much as we focus on technology, we need to focus on people at the same level because the people are what are going to drive everything else forward. I believe we need to work to standardize knowledge across the industry, both on the commercial and government and international side of partnerships. Um, having that, that similar idea about what should be expected from the people that we work with allows us to um, be more efficient and uh, communicate better across the board. I think we need to work to develop a more holistic approach all the way from high school through postgraduate uh, with our education and our professional development, um, better pipelines, not, and I want to be clear here, I'm not talking just uh, college and university type um, flows up into industry, but really um, it applies to all the uh, supporting or technician or other types of support to the space industry. Um, everything from your, like I mentioned, your welder to your seamstress, to your uh, HR recruiting person, your lawyer, financial analyst. There are a lot of really, really smart people that could move and support the space industry and help it grow, but we need to bridge that skills gap. So that holistic approach um, should provide multiple pathways to enter the space industry and the space ecosystem. And finally, 
the the true goal here is to enable better communication, better creativity, more efficiency, and ultimately more positive outcomes uh, across uh, the space economy and the space ecosystem. And that is what will allow us to accomplish all the other great things that are being proposed, that are being invested in, um, and that the future holds for our industry. So with that, I'll leave it saying, I believe the Great Pyramid model is the direction we need to go. And I am very excited to um, help support that type of growth um, and help everyone um, become more advanced within their training, education, and professional development across the industry. With that, I thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm uh, very pleased to have been here and, and discussed this with you. I look forward to hearing uh, your ideas and, and having discussions about the topic. And I hope everyone enjoys the summit. Uh, thank you very much.